Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Monday, July 15, 2013, and I'm your host, Leanne McAdoo. Tonight's top story, George Zimmerman was acquitted in the 2012 shooting death of Trayvon Martin. As promised, protests took place all over the country with thousands of people taken to the streets demanding justice for Trayvon. Oakland police stood down as protesters terrorized drivers. According to a report by ABC7, protesters had complete control of 14th and Broadway near Oakland City Hall and refused to let vehicles pass. At about 8.30 p.m., police opened the intersection to traffic, but it quickly deteriorated when demonstrators surrounded frightened drivers who found themselves trapped. The crowd forced them to turn around. Oakland police officers that had been near the corner retreated, leaving the helpless drivers without police protection. Now this is all very similar to what happened during the LA riots in 1992 when police there were ordered by their superiors to stand down in order that they wouldn't escalate the cycle of violence that was going on there. But because there was no police presence, 53 people died and more than 2,000 were injured during the LA riots. But apparently police this weekend weren't given the stand-down order there because they fired rubber bullets at protesters and arrested several others who blocked off the 10 freeway in L.A. Now when I first heard about the Justice for Trayvon protest and how they were backed financially by the Department of Justice and then of course with the new Black Panthers calling for whitey riots, I thought, you know, they're going to let this play out and enact martial law much like they did during the World Trade Organization riots in Seattle in 1999. The WTO since its inception has come across incredible opposition worldwide because of its obvious authoritarian implications. That's a hard thing to deal with when you've got highly motivated people that have real complaints and valid issues. How do you deal with it? Well you simply call in your friends the left coast communists posing as anarchists under Delta Force direction. They broke windows of the Gap, they're smashing windows at McDonald's, they're dumping over garbage cans. And they are very angry again and hostile. We're seeing more clashes with other protesters telling them to stop because they're giving everyone a bad name. None of the protesters, the legitimate protesters down here, want any of this kind of action. And they are very angry. So right now, knocking the newspaper. Megan, any yeah. sign yet of police uh, trying to track them yeah, down? Not at police anywhere. They're going like the bank window here at U.S. Bank. We gotta get out of here. We're gonna run up the street because if they see us, they attack us. And so we're keeping a safe distance away from them. Several police officers have told us because they were assigned to control the protest crowds, they weren't allowed to break ranks and to stop the black bloc. So the group just continued destroying property for nearly an hour. What's wrong with this picture? If the police are supposedly there to protect the public and property, then why? Why did state police, Seattle police, as well as the feds, stand back and allow the anarchist in mass to run around and throw bottles at police, cones, rocks, you name it, and assault private property as well as members of the general public because they needed someone to demonize the rest of the good demonstrators. You see, the anarchists were actually given their own operations base even during the curfew and civil emergency that was declared after their attacks. Boy, that was a good excuse to clear the streets. If you thought the anarchists who commandeered a privately owned downtown building were out of town now, well, think again. As Cairo 7 Eyewitness News reporter Christina McKenna has found out, they're still here and still living rent-free. Susan, when these anarchists moved out of the building behind me on Saturday, a lot of people thought they should have been headed to jail. Instead, it turns out a lot of them just headed around the corner, and they're now living in a building right over here where they're enjoying electricity, hot water, and heat, all rent-free. Saturday afternoon was a celebration here. Seven days after they commandeered this downtown building, anarchists walked away without a word from police. It feels to me like we won. And at least some are still winning. As part of the deal to get them to surrender this building, anarchists were offered housing just around the corner. 
at the same price. The building is owned by the Low Income Housing Institute, a private nonprofit that is in large part funded by the city and is now working with the city to house the anarchists. First of all, the criminal trespassing, if that was me or you or the average person out in the street, we'd be in jail. John Satoli can't believe the anarchists aren't in jail now. As a lawful tenant in the building the anarchists had seized, he was locked out of his packaging and shipping business for a week during his busiest season. Satoli can't believe he's now contemplating bankruptcy, and the people who put them there have paid no consequence at all. They walked away. They walked away, and they, the city of Seattle, low-income low housing, moved them across the street on me and yours taxpayers' dollars. So why didn't the police department arrest the anarchists when they moved out of that building? Well, that's a question a lot of people are asking, especially since the West Precinct is just down the block. We asked the police department this weekend. We asked them again today. They still haven't returned our call with an answer. Now, for the most part, these protests for Trayvon have been peaceful. So who knows if the powers that be are going to get their wish and inflame this racial tension in the country. But we do know that in Oakland... The freeways were blocked off, violence erupted there, and the police were just allowing the protesters to take over the city, scare drivers and innocent bystanders in, in L.A. As, as well. Who cares if anyone gets killed? Because Zimmerman is a whitey racist cracker, and we must divide and conquer. Now, do I personally think that Zimmerman was wrong to go after Trayvon Martin? Yes, I do. Now, are the lines a little bit blurry where the aggressor becomes the victim in an attack? I think we can all agree on that. But the point is, the justice system acquitted him. They found him not guilty. But still, the media and the protesters are focusing on race. But I feel like a lot of the protesters are failing to recognize the fact that the mainstream media and the Department of Justice are behind pushing all of this racial tension. In fact, a local Tampa news station reported in 2012 that George Zimmerman accused the Sanford Police Department of corruption more than a year before he shot Trayvon Martin, saying the agency covered up the beating of a black homeless man by the son of a white officer. During a 90-second statement to city commissioners at a community forum, Zimmerman said, I would just like to state that the law is written in black and white. It should not and cannot be enforced in the gray for those who are in the thin blue line. Now that story was never covered by the mainstream media, of course, because it didn't fit the agenda of divide and conquer. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.